Ladies and gentlemen, class recording has started, so anything you say in this room is getting picked up right now. Science <laughs> <laughs> right. Hi, Elise. <gasps> yeah, hey. So, starting off today, calendar. If we take a look at the calendar, right? yesterday you guys took the quiz on February 21st. Everybody did pretty well on the quiz. We talked about the question yesterday, blah, blah, blah. Uh, keep in mind, lauric acid lab, I had it here due on Thursday, but like I said, I'm not going to get to that for a couple of days, so I said if you don't have it done, go ahead, and you don't have to necessarily turn it in. But don't forget about it, all right? It doesn't mean you never have to turn it in, it just means you don't have to turn it in tomorrow, okay? Okay, if you want, you can go to one of the wipes out of the, uh, where the goggle can is. That would be a lot of so. Actually, that's the desk that people draw on, isn't it? Yeah, people draw weird stuff yeah, on yeah, yeah. <laughs> For those of you watching or listening at home, Katie has some up or a drawing on her desk. Or a nude drawing. I don't know if it's nude <laughs> or not, but, you know. Most so. likely. Speaking of that. We'll feel better about eating at her desk. <laughs> <laughs> so, now that she's got a, now she's got a little wipe. So. Well, Anybody else need to color out? It's not my boot touches the desk. <laughs> yeah, oh, saying. I can't. What? The wipes are being passed around the room. Good thing we uh, good thing we got this on recording. Or it could be atoms, depending on when we talk about elements or compounds. Okay? 
So that's thermal energy. We're looking at the total motion of all those particles. Okay? What does temperature tell us? What does temperature tell us? Speed. Speed. Uh, the Speed of the motion, right? So now we're not talking about the total amount of motion. We're talking about how fast those particles go on average. Okay? Then heat, we said, was what? How about heat? Sorry about Transfer of thermal energy. Transfer of thermal energy. So now we're talking about thermal energy moving from one object to another object. Okay? Today, we want to discuss that thermal energy transfer, the heat, and how it happens. So today we're talking, this is more of a mechanics thing. How do we get that energy to transfer from one object to another? But starting off, at the top of your outline today, some review terms. As we just discussed, right, what is heat? Heat is the transfer of thermal energy. From one object to another because of a temperature difference. How does this thermal energy flow? How does heat flow spontaneously? Kate? It flows spontaneous, spontaneously from objects with high temperatures to objects with low temperatures. So high temps to objects with low temps. And that was the demonstrate or the situation we talked about yesterday with the two billiard balls running into each other, right? One fast, one slow, one slows down, one speeds up, blah, blah, blah. blah. We said that that heat flow, thermal energy transfer, will continue until what is true about our two objects? They have equal temperatures. Do you remember what we call that? Something equilibrium. Something equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium. Right? So that heat will spontaneously flow. Energy will flow from hot stuff to cold stuff until they're the same temperature. Good there? All right. Now let's talk about how this happens. So the first term that we're going to come across is conduction. By definition, conduction is the transfer of thermal energy with no transfer of matter. The transfer of thermal energy with no transfer of matter. Conduction occurs between particles of a material only when they are touching. So thermal energy occurs between things that are in contact with one another. Good there, for starters? Okay, so let's talk about conduction. <laughs> Let's go back to our analogy that we used earlier, like last week, about our states of matter. What state of matter are you guys existing in right now? You guys are representing a solid. Is it possible for energy to transfer through you guys as a solid? Okay. Let's use, the answer is yes. Okay. Let's use like an old school, like a middle school example, because I know you guys are a little mature for this now, okay? But let's say you need to pass a note to somebody from one side of the room to the other. Although now you probably just text message them, but, you know, whatever. So, and then other people would read your text messages and, you know, whatever. So. Okay, that happened in part, but I still write notes. Okay. Not in this class. Oh, okay, go for Thank goodness. So. All right, so you need to pass a note from somebody from one side of the room to the other side of the room. That note representing the energy, does it have the ability to cause change? Yeah. It could change your life, right? It could be a love connection. Who knows, right? So you write your note, you know, do you like me? Check this box, yes, no, whatever. Call me, maybe. Uh, 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 no, I hate that. Call me, maybe? <laughs> Somebody else I thought it was awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway. So you pass that note, all right? Or you, you want to pass that note, but depending on who you are, you can't just get up and 
walk across the front of the room and throw something away and then walk back to your desk. I mean, I did it, but I was not a jerk. That's well. What are you doing? Only certain. Um, um, anyway, so you don't want to be that kind of a distraction. So what do you do? So, can the note get all the way across the room without anybody taking it there? No, because some people are going to be like, uh, you can't have that. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. Can, wait. Is yeah. it possible yes. for the note to get from one side of the room to the other side of the room without anybody actually taking it there? Yes. 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 That's conduction, right? Nobody moved, but the energy went from one side to the other side. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, that being said, going back to your outline, right? It says using the pictures to the left, explain why conduction occurs more slowly in gases than it does in solids and liquids. Solids are actually very good conductors if they are conductors, and we'll talk about that in a second. How come things travel quickly through a solid? Please? Because there's like a set path. There's a set path, but more specifically, at least, how long does it take the energy to go from one particle to the next particle? Not very long. Why not? So they're, like real close. they're real close together, right? Passing a note in class from one side of the room to the other side of the room would be much easier than trying to pass a note to somebody like in, say, gym class, right? Okay. Because what? There's, like big There's big spaces between you and the next person. And you have to make sure that the person you're trying to pass the note to is in the same place as you at the same time as you, and you're both running, and there's a big space, and all that other stuff, right? Conduction happens very slowly in gases because of the large spaces between the particles. But in solids, especially, conduction happens very quickly because the particles are very close together. Good there? something that Nicole just brought up, okay? Nicole, just because something is a solid, does that mean it conducts things well? No. Because the example you brought up in the note passing scenario is what? Oh, someone may just be like a buzzkill and they want to throw it down. Someone the might be a buzzkill and not want to pass the note. Or maybe they're like concerned about their academic process and they want to listen to the teacher. Could be either thing. I don't know. But, you know, whatever, okay? Yeah. Most likely buzzkill, but whatever. So, is that a solid? Are the people that don't want to pass notes, are they still in the solid state? Yeah, yeah but the, does that mean, is there going to be conduction then? No. no. Okay. So I'm going to jump a little bit out of order here just because of that example. We would refer to that situation as something that is a thermal insulator. All right? I know it's out of order. Go down a little bit to Roman numeral number four. Okay. So, Thermal insulators are materials that conduct thermal energy poorly. Now, let's say as a teacher, I wanted to prevent the passing of notes or the copying of answers on a test, right? during like, I don't know, let's say exams, okay? How do I do it? What did I do to you guys during exams? I slide the desks real far apart, right? It makes it much harder to pass information from one person to the next person, okay? Now, is that a thermal insulator? Yes. 
Yeah, because what did I do to the spaces between the particles? I made them larger. I made them larger. So what kinds of things might be good insulators? Gases are actually really good insulators, okay? But there's also things like, you know, wood or plastic, okay? Wood and plastic are really good insulators, not because they necessarily have far apart spaces, but because they just don't pass notes from one to the other, okay? But, what? Rubber is usually a good insulator, yes. Once again, not because it's spaced far apart, just because there's a bunch of buzz kills in rubber and they don't pass notes, okay? <laughs> but, things like styrofoam, right? Styrofoam is a solid, yes? How dense is styrofoam, though? Not very dense. Why? What does styrofoam have a lot of inside of it? Air. It has a lot of air inside of it. So what does it not do? Pass the it doesn't energy. pass the energy. Specifically, what kind of energy, Becca? Uh, thermal? thermal energy, right? You put something cold inside your styrofoam cup. You put something cold inside of your styrofoam cup on a warm summer day. Which way would heat flow in that situation? If you have something co a cold drink in your cup, right? Heat wants to flow from the outside warm air into your cold drink, right? But if your cold drink is now surrounded by a styrofoam cup that has a lot of air in it, can energy get through? No. Think about if you go to like Starbucks or Panera or something like that, okay, if you get a hot drink, they put it in a cup, but then what do they give you to go around the cup? The little, um, that little like cardboard paper. sleevey thing, right? But that cardboard sleevey thing, if you look at it, it's like a bunch of little folds, right? Yeah. What's inside all Air. those folds? Air, right? Because now it doesn't conduct the heat as well as that paper cup. A big wool sweater or a big poofy coat in the winter time. Why does it keep you warm? Because there's a lot of air in it. It has a lot of air in it, right? Or when it gets cold outside and you dress in layers, each time you put a layer on, what are you doing? What's in between your shirt and your sweatshirt? Oh, a layer of air. What's in between your sweatshirt and your coat? Yeah. A layer of air, right? All of those things are good insulators. It prevents the energy from flowing either out of you or into you. Does that make sense? Okay. Far ahead. Is there still insulation if they stuff in the walls? Yes. Have you ever seen insulation before, Far? It's usually pink, but. It's itchy, but if you ever see it, it's real, like, yeah, it looks like cotton candy. Because what does it have a lot of inside air. it? It has a lot of air inside of it. Okay. Does that make sense? So, thermal insulator, materials that conduct energy poorly. A lot of times it has gases incorporated, in it, although not always. Okay. Now, a term that we have not come across yet is this idea of specific heat. We'll discuss specific heat when we talk about calorimetry next week. But just for reference, thermal insulators have high specific heat values. Hopefully that will make more sense next week when we talk about what actually specific heat is. Okay. Now, on the other hand, right, if you go back up to Roman numeral number three, okay, thermal conductors, by definition, Material that conduct energy well. So things that are metal conduct energy well, generally. It's kind of a crazy one. Floor tiles. It's when you don't have heated floors. Okay? Because now the heated floor is there for a reason. Because, let's go through this scenario. Sorry, write down. Go to which way? So, go ahead. What are the B and R? Oh, thermal insulators usually have, for insulators, 
oscillators, they have high specific heat values. And then for conductors, they have low specific heat values. Although we said that we haven't introduced specific heat yet. We'll get to that in a, in a couple of days. So let's talk about this idea of like something being a good thermal conductor. Obviously, the idea of you know a um, metal pan or something like that, right? If you like touch the metal part of the pan, you're going to get it's hot, right? Because it conducts thermal energy. Well, let's talk about like the idea of a floor tile. So you wake up this morning, right? You get out of your bed, you walk to the, the uh, you walk to the bathroom, right? You step off of the nice carpet and onto the bathroom tile floor, and how does it feel? Cold. It's cold, right? Is the tile floor in the bathroom any colder than the carpet in the hallway? Yeah. It's been sitting in the same house all night. Okay, they're not different temperatures. But your body temperature higher than the temperature of the floor. So which way is energy flowing? Out of your body. Out of you and into the floor. Okay? But if you take a look at a piece of carpet, especially from the side, it's like well, maybe not. That's kind of an exaggeration, right? But it's big and thick and poofy. But if you look at a floor tile, right, it's real thin. What does the carpet have a lot in it? It has a lot of air in it. So does it conduct energy away from you? No. Not as well as, say, the floor tile. The floor isn't any colder in the bathroom than it is in the hallway. Yikes. <laughs> the floor isn't any colder in the bathroom than it is in the hallway. But when you step on it, that heat starts flowing out of your body much faster than it flows out of your body in the carpet. So what does your body then register that as? Cold. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so conductors and insulators. Are we good with conduction? Okay. All right, let's fast forward now. And there's another way that we can do this, this transfer of energy, and that's convection. So, convection is the transfer of thermal energy when particles of a fluid, that being a liquid or a gas, move from one place to another place. So, convection, particles of a fluid, that being a liquid or a gas, can move from one place to another place. And as they move, they take that thermal energy with them. If we go back to our analogy from before of the note passing, what would convection look like? Go back, go back to our example of the note passing from one side of the room to the other. No, no. Let's go back to our example. We said that conduction, what did conduction look like when we were passing a note? One person passes it to the next person, passes the next person, passes the next person. Does anybody actually move? No. No. Savannah, go ahead. Um, but conduction would be when you throw the note? Nope, that's something different. When Nicole gets up and walks across the room, throws something away because she's pretending to throw something away, but really she's going to drop something on somebody's desk on the other side of the room. Okay? Did the note get from one side of the room to the other side of the room? Yeah. Yeah. But in this case, what else happened? Some particle actually moved from one side of the room to the other side of the room. Does that make sense? Okay? In conduction, nobody moves anywhere. In convection, somebody carries the note, picks it up, and brings it to the other side. Savannah, hold on to your example because it's coming up in a second. Okay. So this, right, this would be something like coffee. You got that hot coffee, and then you mix in the cream, and then have you ever watched it when the cream goes into the hot coffee? It goes down, but then what happens to it? It comes back up, and it like mixes all around because that stuff is moving around. Okay. Anybody uh, have a convection oven at their house? No. You might. Anybody work in a pizza joint? Anybody work in a pizza shop? You guys don't really love to work yet, are you? Anyway, so a pizza oven. Okay. If you go to the if you go to the pizza shop. 
shop or whatever, you see how they cook the pizza, right? You kind of put it in one side, and there's a little conveyor belt that comes out the other side. Yeah. Unless you go to like some place that has like wood fire above it, blah blah blah, whatever you say. But let's talk about cooking things. So in your oven at home, the oven heats up the air real hot inside the oven, and then you put your cold frozen pizza inside of it. Yes. Which way does energy flow? From hot to cold. So it flows from the air into the cold pizza, right? But from a conduction standpoint, right, what has to happen in order for conduction to happen? Touch, right? So only the air that's where is conducting heat to the pizza. Only the air that's touching the pizza. And now, if it loses that heat, what's around the pizza? Cold air. Cold air. Is it cooking anymore? Not as much, right? A convection oven basically is an oven with a fan in it, okay? So now, the hot air goes next to the pizza, and the hot air passes energy from itself into the cold pizza. But now, what does the fan do? It blows that hot, that cold air away and replaces it with what? Hot air. More hot air. How fast do things cook? They cook faster then. Okay, question are you? Is a toaster a conductor? A toaster is more, a, to a toaster is more conductor, yeah. Okay, because that air inside the toaster gets more and more and more until it touches the bread. Okay, but there's also some radiation there, but we'll talk about that in a second. Here, this one. When your food is too hot, what do you do to it? Yeah. Right, you blow on it. If your food is hot and it's next to cold air, which way does the heat flow? Yeah. Out of your food into the air. And now the air around your food is what? It's warm. If you blow on it, what do you do to that warm air? You get rid of it and replace it with what? Cold air. Cold air. Okay? The next question on your outline on the front page has to do with something in this city that we deal with a lot called wind chill, right? On a windy day, how come it feels colder? Okay, good. Okay, so on a cold day like today, right? If you go outside, which way is energy going to flow? Out of you and into what? The cold air, right? But after a while, what would happen to the air that's around you? Mm, it would become, it would become warm, right? The air around you would warm up, like in gym class. Like in gym class, even more so. Okay, but on a windy day, what happens to that warm air that's surrounding you now? It gets blown away and it gets replaced with cold air. And now what happens, Sarah? Now you lose more energy to that new cold air. And then the wind blows that warmer air away and replaces it with colder air. Now we call that wind chill, right? So on a cold day, right, you're losing energy to the air. But the wind replaces that warm air around you that gets heated up by your body and replaces it with cold air. Now you lose even more warm. Now you lose even more heat. We will talk about the next question, why it feels really cold when it's wet out after our discussion from Monday. Right. If we go back to this one with the coffee, right? Inside the coffee, we set up with a convection current, okay? First, we talk about coffee and cream, you know what I'm talking about? If you put cold cream and warm coffee, it sort of like swirls around like this, all right? Okay. We call this a convection current. The fluids will circulate in a loop as it heats up and cools down. Because everybody knows, right, that hot air rises and cool air sinks, right? You know that, right? Okay. But that's not really the case. Going back to something we talked about yesterday,
When something gets warm, what happens to its volume? It expands. As something expands and its volume increases, what happens to its density? Because it's well, it's the same mass, but it's a bigger volume. Okay. So as something heats up, it expands. As it expands, its density decreases. Where do less dense things go? They go up. Okay. So as you heat something, its density decreases and it goes to the top. But when it goes to the top, what happens to it? It cools down. And as it cools down, what happens to its density? It increases, therefore the more dense stuff sinks back down. But when it gets cold, when it gets down to the bottom, what happens to it? It warms up again. Now it goes to the top because it's less dense. But then it cools down, so it sinks back to the bottom. And now what have we done with ourselves here? We have this nice little loop. Right? Hot things going up, cool things coming down, right? And so it's really not hot air rising and cool air sinking. It has to do with what? Density differences. Warmer things are less dense generally. So that means that they go up because less dense things rise to the top. Cooler things are generally more dense, so they come back down, right? But as they come back down, they get warmed back up, and then they go back to the top. know 
You ever see one of those uh, heat vision lens things, right? right? They can pick up the energy that you're radiating. It would pick up that energy whether there was air in this room or whether there wasn't air in this room. Okay? Very good. Yeah, you can make it. Yep. And then you can yep. See the people in this room. Right. Because, yeah, how much energy they give off. Now, I mean, like, you see those things, and different colors represent different temperatures, right? This part of your body gives off a lot of energy. It's red, right? Your heart's beating, your lungs are moving, you're digesting lunch. There's a lot going on here, okay? Here, eh, not so much, right? Not so much energy being radiated here, lots here, unless you go and start running, right? Or exercising somehow. Now, right, energy is being given off from your legs, from your arms, because your body's trying to get rid of all that heat it's creating, okay? It would look different after somebody was running versus somebody just sitting there, okay? Good with radiation? We'll talk a lot more about radiation when we talk about waves. Okay. All right, we will save the thermodynamics part until Monday. Good job today, everybody. I hope today is kind of an interesting day. Talk a lot about practical application. All right. Oh, uh, don't forget that if you go to calendar, there are some pages from the book and some questions that relate to the heat transfer idea. All right, probably a good idea to take a look at those.